On the outskirts of San Diego, on the edge of the Otay Open Space Reserve, lies a large California State Prison, Richard J. Donovan Correctional Facility, located in an area where the city ends and nature begins. In the event of an escape, an inmate would likely head to the Mexico border, which is only four miles away. Let's continue our California State Prison series. We'll check out the nearby community before looking at some prison facts, then some notable incidents, before finishing with some infamous inmates. While technically located in San Diego, California and San Diego County, Richard Donovan is 25 miles from the center of the city, which in California drive time can be over an hour away. It is more closely associated with the Otay Mesa community in the southern section of San Diego, which is what we'll focus on. With the Otay River running to the north and the Mexican border to the south, Otay Mesa is typically accessed by Interstate 805 and California State Route 905. Chula Vista, California is also a nearby large city. Otay is derived from the native language in the area, meaning brush and big mountain. The area lies in a semi-arid climate with highs in the summer averaging around 80 degrees. Not too bad compared to some other prisons. Otay Mesa gets a C-plus score from Niche.com with weather, outdoor activities, and diversity all receiving A's. The negatives of the community seem to be the same for much of California, the cost of living and housing. Most notably, Otay Mesa has a large port of entry and is only one of two in San Diego County. It is the third busiest commercial port of entry on the U.S.-Mexican border. The area has a large trucking and warehouse industry that supports the border crossing. The area was settled for agriculture, but by the early 1900s, droughts forced most of the residents out of the area. The Great Depression worsened the agricultural community. San Diego annexed the town in 1956. In 1985, the port of entry opened and the area was rezoned from agriculture to commercial and industrial. Now that we have an idea of the surrounding area, let's move on to some prison facts and figures. Richard J. Donovan Correctional Facility opened its doors in July 1987 on 780 acres. The facility goes by R.J. Donovan, R.J.D., or simply Donovan. It is the only facility named after a person in the California State Prison System. Richard J. Donovan was an assemblyman and judge who helped get the prison project funded. Unfortunately for him, he would pass away prior to its completion. Donovan is a true multi-mission facility with various security levels, a mental health unit, and sensitive needs yards. As of September 2022, the facility was housing just over 3,000 inmates. With a history of overcrowding at one time, Donovan was holding over 4,000 offenders. Population reports show that the majority of inmates, 1,395, are all level 3 offenders. The facility is a designated institution for inmates with severe mental health issues along with developmental disabilities. Given its close proximity to San Diego area hospitals, many inmates with health issues are housed here. The facility operates a bakery, shoe factory, and laundry facility. Each of these positions are preferred working assignments for offenders. Up until 2012, Donovan served as one of the reception centers for the state. The reception areas were converted to sensitive needs yards. The facility has 1,657 authorized staff positions, but 283 of those remain unfilled. Donovan operates on a $264 million operating budget. Although this is the only state prison in San Diego County, there are several nearby detention centers. In fall 2023, the prison will begin a partnership with University of California, Irvine to provide educational services to incarcerated individuals. California also announced that they would be provided 30,000 secured laptops across all state prisons to those attending classes. The CDCR director at the time, Kathleen Allison, said, Give someone an education, you give them skills, you give them hope. After that, they are not coming back to prison. That is public safety. One of the most educated employees at the prison, a psychologist, had his license to practice revoked in 2018. Jeremy Trimble was accused of smuggling cell phones, tobacco, and methamphetamine into the prison. It came to light after an inmate and patient of his attempted to take his own life by overdosing on the drug. Not only did he allegedly smuggle the drugs into the prison, but he crossed the nearby Mexican border to obtain them. He will never practice in medicine again. Also in 2018, some of the residents in one housing unit complained to staff of a foul odor coming from a cell. Correctional staff brushed off the smell as sewer stench. 
Officers did eventually approach one inmate assigned to the cell, but were assured it was nothing. After the smell continued to persist, staff made entry and found a decomposing corpse. The man was found to have died from natural causes several days earlier. What's unclear is why his cellmate tried to cover it up. On the topic of odors, an offender at Donovan sued the state after he was forced to live with raw sewage in his cell for several days. He was quoted as saying, My cell was out of control flooded. There was everything that comes out of a toilet out on my 6x6 floor cell. My socks and shoes were soaked and had also gotten on my sheets on my mattress. My whole cell stinks bad to the point where I threw up. I couldn't sleep and it was disgusting to be forced to eat all of my meals inside the cell on such conditions. Three inmates at Donovan attacked and killed a fellow offender in May 2021. The trio, Aaron Sims, Leslie Bond, and Andrew Hofer, allegedly attacked John Thurs with a shank in the rec yard. He would die after being transported to a local hospital. Each of the men were previously convicted of crimes involving death or serious assaults. Sims was convicted of assault with serious bodily injury. Bond was at Donovan due to a conviction for second degree murder. Lastly, Hofer was found guilty of gross vehicular manslaughter while intoxicated. A series of small riots occurred at the prison in 2019 and 2020. In February 2019, a group of 50 inmates was involved in a large fight, which was eventually quelled using pepper spray. 10 inmates were taken to the hospital. Again, in August 2019, another large melee in the prison yard would break out between 80 to 100 inmates. Four shanks were found after officers were able to get the situation under control. One inmate suffered stab wounds to his face, head, and neck. Unfortunately, a year later, it wouldn't only be inmates injured in another rec yard incident. A group of offenders attacked six correctional officers, causing stab wounds, lacerations, and possible broken bones. Joe Mendez, Luis Delgado, Michael Figuero, and William Barbo were suspected in the attack. Before we move on to a couple infamous inmates, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy my California prison profiles. We can't talk about famous California inmates without talking about the Menendez brothers. They were convicted in the murder of their parents in 1996. The state argued that they killed their parents for their inheritance, but the defense argued that they were abused by their father. They were separated after their conviction for 22 years due to their level four offender status, but were reunited at Donovan in 2018. If they behave here, they may finish their life without parole sentences together. One of the largest figures in rap history is also housed at Donovan. Former music executive and now felon, Suge Knight is probably most well known for his time with Death Row Records. In 2015, he drove his car into a man killing him. Knight may have had the hardest fall in rap history. He has been in state prison since 2018 and has a parole eligibility date of 2034. Our last infamous inmate is Charles Tex Watson of the Manson family. He along with his accomplices were convicted of murdering five people, including actor Sharon Tate. The following night, he would participate in the murders of Lino and Rosemary LaBianca. He would be sentenced to death, but with the overturning of the death penalty, it was commuted to life in prison. Watson may spend the rest of his life at R.J. Donovan. This was another California prison profile. Donovan is a multi-mission facility housing all types of offenses and security levels. Don't let this fool you, a series of large fights and violence has occurred at the facility over the last couple of years. This is no Pelican Bay or High Desert, but I definitely wouldn't want to end up here. Let me know in the comments if you knew of this prison on the outskirts of San Diego. As always, see you next time.